So welcome to this uh, video. We'll talk about the postulates of quantum mechanics. So um, in particular, I, I want to make sure that um, we're talking here about one, one particular choice of postulates. Um, there's other postulates that we can start from, or there's other bases on which we can base our discussion of quantum mechanics, and, and one of which you'll talk about in the future, um, either in uh, this course or in a course on, on quantum field theory for quantum field theory, for example. And that is um, the, uh, the, the, the quantum mechanics based on path integrals rather than on the postulates that I'll, I'll outline here. So um, let's start with the first postulate. The first postulate is about the space of states. Um, so if we, you know, in the, in the past um, few videos, we've talked about the Hilbert space and vector spaces. So there's, of course, a point to this. And the point is that any physical state of a quantum system um, can be described by an element in this complex Hilbert space H um, that we call the space of states. Um, it's completely defined by that state vector. There's no hidden variables and um, all of the properties of the quantum system are determined by that quantum state. That also means that if there is um, linearity in the vector spaces, which there is in, in our definition of Hilbert spaces, that, all, that there is um, a kind of superpos superposition principle that relates two states phi and chi to a, a new state psi. So this new state psi will have to describe a physical state just like phi and chi describe a physical state. Okay, And um, I've already included here the normalization by dividing the sum of these um, this linear combination with lambda and mu through um, by dividing that um, with uh, the, the norm of um, the sum of those states. The second postulate, so that was all the first postulate, basically defining what the space of states is and uh, defining a connection between the physical world and the mathematical description of, uh, of uh, the quantum system. The second postulate connects um, probability amplitudes and probabilities to transitions from one state to another. So if we have two states, phi and chi, representing those physical states by the first um, by the first postulate, then the scalar product between those two, chi scalar product with phi, represents a probability amplitude of finding a state phi in the state chi. So um, if we start off with the state chi, um, and or if we start, if we have a state chi, what is the probability of finding that state at that moment in the state phi? The probability is given by the modulus squared of the of the probability amplitude. So the prob probability amplitude is the um, is the scalar product, and the the probability is the square of that or the modulus squared of that. Um, so that's of course something that um, you're familiar with. The probability of finding a state itself. Um, is, is equal to 1. So the probability of finding the state phi and the state phi must be equal to 1. And then, of course, we can use Schwartz's inequality um, to, to make sure that this probability is well behaved because the maximum value for this modulus squared is equal to um, the product of, of chi, um, scalar product with chi, and phi scalar product with phi. So that's equal to 1. Um, it's always a positive number, so our probability squared, or our probability, which is our modulus squared, is between 0 and 1, which makes sense for a probability. So there is a, um, a, a reasonable assumption that, that we can interpret this as a, as a probability. The, the square of the probability amplitude um, is, is a probability. Um, in practice, we'll work with normalized states, so um, phi... Uh, scalar product with phi, the modulus of that will be equal to 1. Um, if that's not the case, then we can, of course, modify our expression for the probability in terms of probability amplitudes by um, dividing by the, the, the modulo, the, the norm of phi um, and chi. So we can, we can modify that, but instead we'll work with normalized states. Also, since the um, the, the modulus squared of this probability amplitude from, chi, from phi to chi um, is equal to uh, or does not depend on multiplying the initial state or the, the state phi by a, um, a phase difference. Um, those phases are, are going to be unobservable when they're 
um, included in, um, in probability amplitudes. Of course, it does make a difference if, if we go back to the first postulate and we look at our discussion of linearity here, if there is a phase associated with chi that is different from the phase um, with phi, then of course that will make a difference. And so there may be a difference in the, in the probability amplitude of measuring the state psi in some particular state. But um, in terms of uh, probability amplitudes, the phases of probability amplitudes do not result in those differences in probabilities. So technically we could say that in, in postulate one, we're actually describing the physical state of a system, of a quantum system, not with uh, just a, a single element of a vector space, but with the normalized basis vectors of one dimensional subspaces of that Hilbert space. And that's what we've previously called rays, in, um, uh, rays of that vector space. So these one dimensional subspaces. So any um, normalized basis vector of those rays um, corresponds to a physical, uh, um, a physical system. So in the next videos, we'll go over um, the next postulates uh, of quantum mechanics.